part of these vessels being built in the 1800s, there are only two of these vessels that are still known about to this day, and this is one of them. Now, the Bermuda is a very popular dive site, as I mentioned before. It is so popular because it's so shallow and an intact vessel. Now, that's pretty rare, especially with how shallow it is. Usually, the wave and ice action crushes shipwrecks. That's what gives them their classic debris field look on Lake Superior. Usually, the ocean wrecks look pretty close to the same. Now, when the Bermuda was still in service, she would have had a five-man crew, three crewmates, a first mate, and a captain. When the Bermuda had originally started taking on water, they had tied the Bermuda off to some trees over by where the Nina paper mill is today. The captain and first mate went offshore up to a logging camp that was in the wetland area. They went there and radioed for help. The next morning when they came back with some help from the logging camp and some tools and equipment, they saw that the Bermuda had pulled away from the shoreline, taking the trees that it was tied to right by the roots. It had sank in almost 200 feet of water. A few years later, the Canadian Salvage Company had came to salvage the high-grade iron ore, as the original insurance company had claimed the wreck was a total loss, meaning that the, wreck, the wreck's cargo could be salvaged. So the Canadian Salvage Company had swung canvas straps underneath the belly of the ship. They had lifted the entire shipwreck up with steam hoists and they drug it over to this bay. Now this bay is called Marie's Bay. This is where the Canadian Salvage Company had conducted their operations for the entire summer. They had salvaged about 400 of tons of that high-grade iron ore, with almost 88 of the tons still being down in the cargo hold. 